Sliger sent over their CX4712 for me to introduce you guys to, and this is a 10 bay for you chassis and it's pretty big but nothing out of the ordinary it's similar in size to a rose wheel chassis that we've talked about plenty of times in the past so with that out of the way let's get this thing cracked open and go ahead and start taking a look at all the different features that this chassis has to offer for you at home the exterior chassis is made from 20 gauge galvanized steel and sports a very lovely semi-gloss texture powder coat finish the front panel is 18 gauge galvanized steel and the rack gears are 14 gauge galvanized steel. The front panel is magnetically attached and does not include a filter. Maybe in the future, a magnetic one could be included, but for now, you'll have to provide your own filter. The exterior dimensions of the chassis is 24.89 inches deep, 17 inches wide, and of course, four units high. With the front panel removed, we can take a closer look at the 10 storage slides. Here we can see the included SATA slash SAS adapters that are pre-mounted for us. To lock the drives into place, you slide this mechanism which can then be secured by tightening the thumb screws down. You can then use the included key to lock the sliding mechanism, preventing it from moving entirely. There are two 5.25 inch bays that can be used to house a variety of drive bay accessories, either for additional front I.O. or even additional storage like this 8 bay NVMe adapter and even a cup holder. The Blake filters themselves can be used to store one 3.5 inch hard drive or two 2.5 inch storage devices like this SSD. The front IO panel has a power switch that is ringed with a white LED. There are two USB 3.0 ports and one USB-C 10 gigabit per second port. We can open the top lid by removing these two screws. The top lid is fairly snug and may require some strength to remove it. But once removed, we can see how this beast can hold everything from a mini ITX to an EATX motherboard. The stated max height for air coolers is 153 millimeters tall, with the Noctua NGD12L being the recommended cooler. However, this Noctua NH-U12S is 158 millimeters tall and seems to fit perfectly fine. Although I wouldn't push your luck with other coolers. Here is the rear side of the two 5.25 inch bays and the SAS slash SATA adapter connections. On both sides of the fan bracket are these cable brushes that allow cables to be passed through while also assisting airflow to pass through the fan bracket itself. The fan bracket is removable and supports up to 360 millimeter AIOs or up to three 120 millimeter fans that are 38 millimeters thick. This bracket can be completely removed if you so desire. You first need to unscrew the four screws on the bottom of the chassis to remove it. You can also adjust the depth of the bracket so that it sits closer to the motherboard, which is what I did for this build. The brushes can also be removed or moved along with the fan bracket so that it sits closer to the motherboard. I ended up moving both the cable brushes and the bracket so that they sit closer to the motherboard itself. I wanted to take this opportunity to warn you about being careful while working with the interior parts or you might cut yourself like I did. We have 8 full height PCI cutouts. The max height for PCI devices is 158 millimeters tall while the max length is between 316 millimeters or 289 millimeters depending on the fan or AIO configurations. There is an inner tray that can be removed which in theory makes assembling a system easier. Removing four screws on both sides of the chassis allows this tray to be uh, easily removed with a hammer. <laughs> From here the tray slides right out and now we can begin assembling the server. We get two accessory kits with this chassis. The first includes our PCI brackets, every screw and standoff you will need for the chassis itself, and two sets of rack gears. Here is what both sets of rack gears look like when they are attached to the chassis. The second kit has two SATA power breakout cables, two SAS slash SATA adapters, hard drive shoulder screws, extra thumb screws, and the keys. You will need to use the included motherboard standoffs to get your motherboard mounted to the inner tray. To help me tighten down the standoffs, I used a five millimeter socket so that I could really get a grip on them. This will help ensure that when loosening the motherboard screws in the future, you do not loosen the standoffs as well. You can always use the motherboard itself to help figure out where you should place the standoffs. So that way you have proper support and avoid any potential for an electric short. 
I'm not 100% sure, but I believe these screws marked in blue are supposed to be used to screw down the motherboard to the tray. Be sure to put the IO shield in first before tightening down your motherboard though. The chassis itself supports ATX power supplies with a maximum length of 270 millimeters. These are the screws that you will use to tighten down the PCI covers or PCI devices. I like how they are marked so that they are distinct from the other screws. I will not be installing the PCI covers that are included with the chassis, but feel free to do you. I will be using this very old LSI 9211 8i HBA card to attach my hard drives to the operating system. I will also be using these mini SAS to SATA breakout cables to connect between the HBA card and the hard drives. Don't worry, there will be links for everything in the video description that I've used. Before moving on, I wanted to show how I went about mounting a radiator and some fans to the fan bracket so you can get an idea of how to do it yourself. I also repeated these steps, if you will, for an only fan setup. So this gives you a better idea of how this process might work. This is the point where I decided to go ahead and slide the motherboard tray back into the server housing and start getting everything wired up and connected. Now remember, I will leave links in the video description for the HBA card I used and the breakout cables should you need some examples to follow. Do you have to use an adapter like this? Of course not. You can use traditional SATA cables and SATA power. I just am using this high bandwidth adapter and so I'm going to use these adapters because it'll make it easier for me when I'm using my drives. But you know, you use whatever tools are necessary. Now if you do decide to use traditional SATA cables, I highly recommend using right angle connectors just so that way they sit more fleshly inside of that really tight space. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything plugged in and powered on, but I won't be using the SATA breakout cables because I just don't need them. I only have six drives that are maybe plugging in the server. And if we need more in the future, I mean, I guess I can use the breakout cables, but it's really unneeded. So let's just go and get everything plugged in. I'll save you guys from the boring parts. Construction complete. Mission accomplished. Originally I had intended to use six drives, but then I had the thought that maybe I should try my Western Digital Easy Store drives. Now these drives are shucked from a Easy Store device. So basically all that means is that they've been removed from their shell. And part of this test, or at least why this is important to know, is because typically these drives have had issues with power supplies or SATA adapters because of a 3.3 volt pin issue. So these have an extra pin or something to that effect where they don't always work with all power supplies or all adapters. So this is gonna be a very important test and that's why I decided to use these four drives instead. And these are 14 terabyte easy store Western digital drives. So now that we've got all of our screws screwed into each of our drives, we can do this test and see if they show up in the operating system. All right, we just need to make sure we unlock this so we can slide our drives in. Now I believe they go this way and they should slide right on in there and they do lock in pretty nicely, surprisingly. I wasn't surprised, or I am a little surprised they sit in so well. The only thing that I'm a little fearful of is these don't have any sort of anti-vibration there's nothing, no rubber or a gasket around any of these. So these may actually vibrate and make some considerable noise. Uh, that is something we may need to worry about. Hopefully locking this down in place will prevent any vibration. Hopefully that's something they can add or fix in future versions of this. I think, yeah, those wiggle around even though we've got them locked down pretty tight. So I booted into Unraid for ease and we can see the four 14 terabyte Western Digital shuck drives appear here in the screen. So that might be a little difficult for you all to see, but it is in fact them. So that's good that that worked. Before I show you guys how to install the inner rail kit, I just want to describe all the different pieces. So you have parts that look like this right here. These go towards the back side of your rack. They will hold up the rear side of your server and you get different lengths of those. The shorter ones will go on the front of your rack. Here are your inner and outer rails. The teeth here will go towards the front of your rack and the barren side will go towards the back of your rack or the back of the chassis. And then of course we have inner rails in here. These slide all the way out. They look about like this. The easy way to know which way these are to face is this little clip here or whatever you want to call it will always go towards the back of your 
chassis. So this is the front of the chassis, this is the back, and they'll go like this. All right, you'll use six of these screws here. They're very short and they're distinct from all the other screws. So you'll have six of these and you should have four left over when you're done attaching all of the rails to the side. Now, we're gonna use the very first hole on the inner rail kit, and we're gonna line that up with the very first hole on the chassis. And remember, this goes towards the back, and then the straight edge or flat edge goes towards the front. Very simple. All right, let's tighten that down. Easy. Now we're gonna to go to the very back to make sure that we get the rearmost hole secured. Done, and now we're just gonna do four more anywhere that you'd like or anywhere that you'd see fit, and you will get the rail kit attached to the side of the server chassis. Super simple, right? So here we are on the rear side of the rack. I've already got my first nut screwed in, and the I'm using the long bracket that I mentioned earlier that goes on the rear. And screwing this in is pretty simple. It may require two people depending on your level of skill and how comfortable you are, but don't worry um, if you need to use two people to do this job, it's very simple. All right, and it doesn't matter if these don't line up perfectly. Um, the cuts of these holes are different on almost every rack, so they may not line up appropriately, but just get it in there nice and secure. The reason I like to start from the back is just to help understand exactly where the length needs to be. So I put the outer rail inside of here and then I'm pushing it all the way forward towards the front of the rack to get an idea of how long it needs to be. And then I'm gonna push one of these tiny screws through and tighten it down with a nut, just using my hand strength for now. Nothing too crazy. Make sure we get the length where we need it. All right. I'll take the other one of these and this nut as well, and we'll do the same thing on the bottom. Okay. And this is the easy way to do it if you're alone. All right, we got that mounted, so now we can move to the front. With the length figured out, we can take the front bracket and sandwich the outer rails between the bracket and the vertical post, then tighten and secure everything into place. If you did everything correctly, it should look like this. The smaller front bracket up front and the longer bracket in the rear. Also, don't forget to tighten down the nuts and screws on the rear bracket. Pull the outer inner rail all the way out until it locks into place. Give it a little tug to make sure that it is completely locked. From here, just slide the server rails into the rail slides. Push in the tabs on both sides to continue sliding the server along the rails until they lock in place. Once locked in, this is where you would normally extend the rails out to and perform any maintenance you would need. Push the tabs again to slide the server all the way into the rack. The way I was able to get the perfect fit between the server above it and itself was simply by making sure that the screws or the rack was mounted in between 10 and 11. So what does that really mean? So let me zoom back out here. So we have 12, that's one U, 11, that's two U, 10 and nine. So that's a total of four U right here and the rails need to sit in between or right in the middle of the 4U in order to give you that perfect fit. So I think that makes sense. If not, just kind of look at it and you'll understand that the top of the 12U is here, the bottom of the nine is here, and we went right in the middle. Overall, I think the build quality of the server itself is pretty much perfect. There's not really anything I would change except for maybe adding rubber grommets around the hard drive so they don't vibrate as much. You can hear them when they're spinning up and down and you, you will hear that vibration noise. So anyone who's like really sensitive to noise, you probably don't wanna have the server chassis next to you unless it's in a full enclosure or you maybe have rubber grommets for yourself. That's the only area of improvement that I can see for that Slager can make to these things. Aside from that, it's pretty much perfect. The build quality is high, everything is is perfect. I don't know how else to better describe it. I'll definitely keep Slager in mind for all future builds. With all that being said, I want to thank each and every of you for watching, and I want to thank you, Slager, for sending over the chassis. I very much appreciate that, and I will see you all next time. Peace.